wonder if I can lift the network, the caramel network. This perfectly balanced blend of sweet and savory has been enjoyed by Chicagoans since the 1940s. And it could be the very best, most delicious popcorn that you'll ever shove in your face hole. Just ask one of the dozens of tourists in the perpetual line outside of Garrett's in the city. Some people will not leave the city of Chicago without packing one of these in their carry-on. The good news, you don't have to come to the city of big shoulders to get your hands on some of this. You don't have to leave that cozy couch of yours because you can make it at home. Dare I say, better. All right, first let's pop some popcorn. To a large pot with a lid over medium heat, add in about three tablespoons of neutral oil and half a cup of popcorn kernels. After about a minute or so, once all the popcorn has seemingly popped and there are multiple second breaks of silence in between the popping, remove it from the heat and set it aside. You're gonna repeat this process twice, one for the cheese and one for the caramel. There's something about making popcorn in a pot that just kinda makes it more delicious than popping it in one of those little weird plasticky bag things, I don't know. All right, so caramel or just like sugar work in general can be pretty tricky sometimes. However, I'm gonna show you a very easy trick on how to make a caramel that won't screw up on you. So adding a bunch of water to that sugar allows the crystals to fully dissolve into the water so it's more even and it's less likely to crystallize on you. If you've ever tried making caramel before and that's happened to you, it's a huge pain in the butt and it does happen a lot. Pain in the butt. Popping the lid on top is gonna help keep some of that moisture in there. The water's gonna fall down the sides of the rim of the pan and sort of keep sugar from crystallizing on the side walls of the pot, which means no crystallization, which means an easier, smoother caramel. After about 15 minutes, after the water evaporates, the color of the caramel will begin to darken. You'll notice the bubbles are, are very big right now, which means it's viscous and they're only gonna get bigger the bigger the bubbles, like the thicker the caramel. And, but of course, the color is really what you're looking for. Nice. It's starting to like smell like a little more, little more caramelous. Yep, look at that color, it's darkening. Once it gets to this stage, add in the unsalted butter and a dash of vanilla extract. And this might seem kind of strange, but we're also going to pop in a bit of baking soda, which is just gonna help lighten the caramel up in texture, making it a little airier and able to coat more pieces of popcorn without being as dense as normal caramel. The caramel will pop up pretty much right when you add that baking soda, so don't tweak, everything's fine, everything's normal when this happens. Add one batch of popcorn to a large mixing bowl, then pour the hot caramel directly on top. Add in a healthy pinch of sodium chloride, then begin folding the caramel into the popcorn. You'll want to work with some sense of urgency here because the caramel will harden quickly. Once mixed, turn the caramel popcorn onto a parchment lined sheet tray and allow it to harden. Just a little more salt while it's hot. And while this cools, we can work on our cheese. Which starts with a stick of butter that we're just gonna melt down and begin to brown because the only thing better than buttered popcorn is brown buttered popcorn uh, with cheese. You, you gotta have cheese too. After four or five minutes on low heat, the milk solids in the butter will toast and darken. Once the butter begins to smell a little nutty and look dark like that, just pour it directly over the popcorn, again, that you've placed in a large mixing bowl. Toss to coat, make sure all those pieces are nice and buttery. Now it's on with a healthy dusting of cheddar cheese powder, some kosher salt, and of course you already know, the GP. Just a small pinch or two of that. I understand that cheddar cheese powder might be sort of a specialty item, so I'll do my best to link out to that. All it is is dehydrated cheese that's been blitzed into a powder. It's actually a really fun, interesting ingredient, and of course perfect for our popcorn situation. That is literally all you do. Uh, once that cheddar powder sticks to your fingers harder than Flaming Hot Cheetos, you're in a good place. All right, let's check on the caramel corn. I wonder if I can lift the network. Oh. <laughs> That's tight. The caramel network. Just kind of lightly breaking it up with your hands because you don't want to like completely destroy the kernels. Because, you know, people don't mind a little cluster here and there. Caramel clusters are good. Cluster bomb, bad kind of cluster. Caramel corn cluster, good kind. 
If done right, the caramel will set and become hard in some places and slightly chewy in others, but it's never gonna be wet. It's a nice contrast of textures. All right, so notice how we got some white spots in this caramel here. Two ways to avoid that. One, make more caramel and add more caramel if you're doing a larger batch, or two, just use less popcorn. I could have easily used less popcorn to make it more caramely looking in color, but it's fine. It's gonna taste good, and every piece does have some caramel on it, so we're Gucci. Now is time to cross the streams. Don't tell the Ghostbusters. To me, this Chicago mix of cheddar and caramel is the perfect balance of yin and yang. You have the salty richness from the brown butter cheddar mixed in with the relieving sweetness and crunch of the caramel corn. It's, it's just, it's really nice. This could be one of the most slept on flavors in the entire popcorn universe. Uh, not really sure how big the popcorn universe is, but yeah. Here in town, there is known to be one popcorn king, that being Garrett. However, once you make a batch of this homemade stuff, you might be second-guessing that claim to the throne. Look at that. Alright, let's try this out. Mm. Mm. Yes! It's a problem with this stuff. Once you start going, you can't stop. Your brain will, will not allow it. Mm. Let's do a little, little side by side here. I love the look of the Garrett's popcorn. It's super even and they're nice and puffy. This is their caramel corn. Good stuff. It almost melts away in your mouth like a candy. Whereas ours over here is a little a little more like brittle and crispy. And the caramel's a little deeper too, which I personally like. Let's try the cheddar. Garrett's cheddar. Mm. That is some of my favorite cheddar popcorn on the face of the earth right here. Our cheddy here. Mmm. Dang. So our cheddar, first off, I have to say, even though theirs is, is beautifully even and ours is a little more speckled, I like this deep orange color more than this yellow color. Garrett's is legendary. There's a reason why it's so popular and famous. I mean, just look at this. This is picturesque. If you were to ask AI to generate a picture of popcorn, it would look like this. How do they get it to look like a brain like that? Ours, on the other hand, a little more rustic, but I will say the flavor can compete. If anything, it might be a little deeper and a little bit more complex and interesting. Get a little bit of cheese pow pow in our caramel. That's good. There you have it, the Chicago Mix Popcorn. The perfect balance between yin and yang. Sweet and savory. I'm pretty sure this is a Midwest thing. Um, I've heard people call it cheddle corn. One of, one of you guys DM'd me and, and said that you guys like to make something similar and you call it cheddle corn, which is kettle corn and cheese, which the name is tight, so it's probably really tasty too. Anyways, you know the drill. If you like the video, if you're planning on making this, like the video, sub to the chan if you're new here, and I shall see you next time. Later.